Brianna and Presley and today I'm going to be sharing with you a breastfeeding update. Presley is going to be five months old in a week so I think I'll call this a four to five month breastfeeding update. So far we're still doing really good. I have had to be traveling for work a couple of times which always makes me a little bit nervous that either my supply is going to dip or you know, just that she could start to kind of wean herself because she's just getting so many bottles and not even the bottles during the day like her usual when she's at my Gigi's house and me at night. But breastfeeding is still going strong and I'm really, really committed. My goal is to get to at least a year with her. I got to 15 months with my son, so we will see how far this little girl allows us to go because I will just kind of allow her to self wean. I did the same thing with my son and I feel like it worked out really nicely. All right, so let's talk about how many times a day I'm feeding, how much I'm producing since I am pumping quite a bit. So I sort of know on average how much I'm producing on the daily. So this is sort of Presley's feeding schedule. She'll wake up around seven in the morning and eat right away as soon as I get her changed, she eats. Then by the time she gets over to my Gigi's house on a weekday, around 10 o'clock, she has another feed. And yeah, you do, don't you? You're listening. Talking all about you, girl. Um, and then she'll eat again, usually three hours later, around one o'clock, and then have a sort of afternoon snack before Adam picks her up around four o'clock. So she's eating pre pretty regularly and this past week we did introduce cereal twice a day so one of the times she's over my grandma's house she's having four ounces it's really like four ounces of breast milk mixed with just like one tablespoon of rice cereal or oatmeal cereal i got like two oh yeah do you are because i'm talking about the cereal does that make you want it it's almost your cereal time here it's the weekend when i'm filming this so she's about to get her first round of cereal after her morning feed, it's about 10 o'clock, so she just had her morning nursing session after her first nap of the day, which she's really not a good napper, not a good sleeper. We're making some improvements though, and I'll talk about that too. Um, if you follow me on my Instagram, you've probably seen just some of the sleep struggles that we've had. Coley, no. Coley, sorry Coley, just wanted to make a sound appearance on today's video too. Anywho, so then by the time she gets home, generally around 6 o'clock, she'll get her second rice cereal feeding of the day, do her bath, do her bedtime routine, and then have her bedtime feed. It, one of the things that Adam and I are trying to do is actually then give her a bottle on top of that feed, just because I am producing enough during the day so that she's super, super full, so that she's sleeping longer stretches at night. We're trying to wean her off of night feeds. So up until about four and a half months, because then she's like four months and three-ish weeks right now. Um, four and a half months, she was still waking every two to three hours at night. So she would go down by seven, she would be up around 9.30, then up around 11.30, then up around 1.30, up around 3.30, up at 5.30, then finally like up at seven. And it just is becoming not sustainable. So I have gotten so much wonderful advice from you guys had just a couple of like consultations with different sleep trainers um, just to kind of get like, hey, what are we doing? Because I felt like between the bedtime routine and all of, the <laughs> between the bedtime routine, sorry, I get distracted when I like see that she's looking at me. Um, but anyways, I felt like between the bedtime routine and just everything that we were kind of doing, like we were doing everything right as far as like eat, play, sleep, and making sure that the room is dark and that we had a structured routine so she knew that it was nighttime. And I feel like she's actually never had a problem knowing night versus day until like we had just one night where it felt like maybe this could be the signs of the four month sleep regression where she was suddenly wide awake. And of course it just happened to fall on a Sunday night, like before a work week, right? It's like, you couldn't have done this on a Friday or Saturday night when I could have just hung out around the house a little bit more. Um, and so between Adam and I, that one night, it was just like each of us maybe got three hours of sleep. So not very fun. I don't know what was going on that night with you. She was just like inconsolable crying. And I even brought her in the room in the dock tot for her to co-sleep with me because I know a lot of people are like, well, you should be co-sleeping. It will make your life so much easier. And actually, I don't think, like I get a worse night's sleep when she's sleeping because I 
personally feel too much anxiety of that I could fall asleep and harm my baby. So like, I get it, like everybody has their own opinions and that's really, like, all of this is just to say, like the reason why I make these videos is just to share my personal experience and make connections with other people. It's never to say that the way I'm doing things are right. This is just what works for my baby. So if you're like me, I like exploring and getting a lot of data and looking at a plethora of opinions just so then I can make the decision that feels right for me but also is then what works for my baby because any parent will probably tell you, especially if they have more than one child, <laughs> Yeah, what works for one doesn't necessarily work for the other. These little people are full of so many variables that sometimes it just takes some trial and error to figure out what's going to work for your little one. So I hope we can keep this comment space, continue to be one that's supportive and kind and helpful and not one that's full of making anyone feel mom guilt or shaming moms for their choices or what they say. Um, but I feel like you guys are awesome in that way. So I don't really need to make that disclaimer, but um, it has been really cool because I feel like there are more new people around here these days. So I hope that you're joining this space because you want to be part of something that's positive and uplifting and a supportive community, not one that's full of controversy or shaming. There's just like way too much hate in the world that this is not the space for that. This is our escape from all of that. <laughs> and the struggles of momhood are real. So <laughs> yes, they are Presley, but I wouldn't have it any other way. I would choose to become a mommy a hundred million times over and over again. But it is one of those things you want to do it right because you love these little ones so much and that's why I make these videos and why I connect to all of you and why I try to be just as real as possible and sharing my experience so that we can connect over it. Doesn't that sound good? Doesn't that sound good, Presley? Doesn't that sound good? <laughs> Presley's cool with it. Um, anywho, okay, so her feeding. So this past week, once we've introduced the cereal, that definitely seems to be happening to ensure that her calorie count, especially during the day, is much higher so that we could wean her to just one night feed. So what my husband and I have done is I'll still feed her at night. We'll try to get her to take a bottle, but usually between the cereal and nursing from me, she doesn't really want the bottle, but she'll go to sleep. And then if she does wake up between the time she goes down at seven to one in the morning, cause that's sort of like the midway point, the six hours. And that's what our pediatrician said. She should be able to go six to eight hours and not need a feed. So if she does wake up, my husband goes in and just soothes her with no food. Um, because everything I've read and all of the advice even that I've been getting from other mamas was you can't have the lactating person go in there because they smell you and want you and then can sometimes can become even more inconsolable because they're not getting what they want. So he goes in there, soothes her, either just like singing to her with the pacifier and then generally she'll stop crying. The longest we really let her cry is like between five to ten minutes and it's never like a cry that is I'm in pain or horrible. It's kind of just more of like the sleepy whiny cry. And I feel like every mom kind of like has their own way of how they pick up on it. But if I've ever heard her like really giving a hard cry, I tell him to go in right away. If she's just kind of like has her fingers in her mouth and is self soothing and like kind of what she's even doing right now, just kind of like, uh, um, yeah. I don't have him rush in there to assist her until like five to 10 minutes. Um, just so again, like the whole point is she needs to learn to self-soothe and put herself to sleep. Oh, what? What? What's wrong? I'm almost done. Are you getting bored? <laughs> She's like, I'm getting bored, mom. I wanna go play on my floor mat. We'll go play on your floor mat in a second. Okay. Okay. But so then during the work day when I am pumping, I pump three times while she's away from me because that's how many times she eats over Gigi's house. And about every time that I pump, my first pump is usually my best one. Usually I get anywhere from eight, but usually it's upwards of like 10 or 11 ounces. Um, so I think that one really helps because she drinks between six to eight ounces of feed. But then because of the rice cereal, that's kind of my morning pump where I get the extra milk for her four ounces that goes into the cereal. And then my two pumps, like later on in the afternoon, I do one like around lunch and then one kind of in the middle of the afternoon. 
usually around three o'clock is where I try to aim to do it so that I like fill up again by her feed around 6.30 in the evening. Um, those pumps are anywhere from like five to eight ounces. So it helps, I think, supply and demand is what she's drinking over my Gigi's house. But I actually have recently sent some formula over to my Gigi's house and she hasn't had it yet, but I'm 100% okay with her getting formula, even if it's just for one feed. Because again, we're trying to wean her off of the night feeds so that we can be getting more rest and so that she can be getting better rest. Because truly, like when your baby is getting enough sleep, that's important for their development. So, and <laughs> not to mention if parents are getting enough sleep, that just equals a happier family in general, right? If she needed a bottle of formula, I'm not stressing out over it. I think it's really, really cool that we've made it to nearly five months without any formula. Um, I'm obviously very proud of that, but if it's going to help her to learn kind of how to fall asleep on her own and have a better night's rest in the end, I know that's better for all of us. So I am okay with the formula game if necessary and not feeling any shame in that. Um, because at the end of the day, a healthy, happy baby is all that matters. Okay, you see her little like bald spot in the back of her head? <laughs> mm -hmm. Poor Presley. It will go away. Don't worry. Mommy. Yeah, it will go away. Okay, so the last thing I was going to talk about is just how on the go pumping has been when I have had to travel for work. And I did film a day in the life to kind of show you guys what it exactly looks like. Um, but I think the hardest part of pumping when traveling is just in airports. There are some spaces that are really nice, I have to say, in the DC, like Reagan Airport. There's some nice nursing mom little rooms. The only issue is they're before security. And yeah, and a lot of times security can just take you a lot longer with your breast milk because they'll want to take all the milk out of the cooler and they like put it in some kind of little inspection thing. I'm not really quite sure what it does. I asked the guy and he himself was like, I don't really know. I just know this is what I have to do. <laughs> so um, anyways, that can just add a little bit of stress to your travel because you're already like wanting to make sure that you get home to your baby on time and having to be at the airport then even extra early and like making sure it works with your pumping schedule to like pump, then get through security and then, you know, the entirety of the flight. Yes. So I brought my manual pump with me just in case I would ever have to actually just pump on the plane because of a delay or something like that. Um, yeah. I had a really bad experience with my son where a flight got delayed and it was to California. So already like a five hour flight. Um, and it got delayed like two hours. We were just sitting on the tarmac. So I had to pump on that flight and like the flight attendant wouldn't let me use an electrical outlet. Um, so I was like freaking out and I didn't have a hand pump at the time. So I have learned my lesson with your brother. I will always bring my hand pump with me just in case, just in case. Um, and then just from a storage perspective of making sure that there's enough ice that I have in my cooler and that my mouth like is obviously staying fresh because I want to be able to bring home to her all of the milk that I'm making when I'm pumping away from her. Yeah. Um, and it was really, really unfortunate. And this was actually in the day in the life video. Once I edit it and get it up for you guys, I just had had the milk in the cooler for over 12 hours. And generally they say like you are safe for like eight to 12 hours with your milk in a cooler. You can always do the sniff test. I've had some other moms tell me of like, been 12 hours but it doesn't smell like spoiled you can definitely still use it it just makes me nervous I like don't ever want to give her something that could potentially make her feel sick um so that day just because I had been in the airport went directly to campus I couldn't go to my hotel like before I went to the campus where um I'd be working for the day so I by the time I got back to my hotel room at like 9.30 at night, it had been way over 12 hours for some of the milk, and so I just ended up having to dump it. Um, which is so aggravating and irritating. It just, it's like so disheartening when you like are struggling and doing everything you can to like keep up with pumping, keep up with feeding your little one. It's just so unfortunate. Um, but yeah, that's probably just like 
the only real struggle because when I'm working from home, that is so much more convenient to be like pumping when you're working at home and can wash everything right in your kitchen and have it go right into your refrigerator. So you're not having to worry about like storing it at the office and bringing it home in a cooler every night, that kind of a thing. Um, so I feel lucky about that situation for sure. Yeah. If you have any questions as far as breastfeeding, pumping, pumping while traveling, transporting your milk, any sort of tips, I will definitely be happy to answer those if you leave them in the comments. Um, and thank you again for watching this video. I hope you have a good rest of your day. Do you want to say bye? Say bye, guys. Say bye-bye. <laughs> you look tired again. You need a nap. Mm -hmm. Bye, guys. I'm telling you the truth